How did you first hear about virtual production? Virtual production really became big and known from the uh, Mandalorian TV show from Disney. And that's kind of like where I got a taste of it and really heard about it. Um, and that was like 2019, around COVID, maybe 2020. Um, but yeah, that's, that's when I first really heard about it and really started extensively researching it um, and saw the, the power and the capabilities and all the things what can be done with it really can benefit and help people and filmmakers and companies um, with, film, with filming for their, whatever they're trying to shoot, whatever project. How many movies or TV shows can you name right now that you feel use virtual production? There's a lot, Mandalorian, I mentioned one. It's a space movie with Tom Cruise. I don't remember off my head, but there, there's uh, Lion King. The Lion King used it. Um, there's been a lot, of, it's, a lot of commercials have used it for stuff, for like airplane stuff, um, car process stuff, commercials for like Samsung or whatever, like cell phone commercials in, in a car. Um, they don't have to actually go drive out in the streets, so they use virtual production or in camera VFX, which they parallel. So, how did you decide to build your own studio? So, this whole studio came about um, a couple years ago. Let's see, I was location scouting for a project in uh, Lancaster in the desert, and um, I was already researching virtual production and looking into it and saw all the benefits of it. Um, but when I was in Lancaster, I was driving out there, I was in my Jeep, and uh, I go on this hill, hilltop area, and of course, my, I'm like, I'm the only one where my Jeep gets stuck. <clears throat> so it gets stuck in the sand. The second time this has happened, like a year before it happened, but anyways, it gets stuck in the sand, I'm out in the middle of nowhere, the, the transmission blows out, like transmission's done, because I'm trying to get out of there. Yeah, it took me like an hour to get a tow truck out there, and then he barely could get out there to where I was. Um, so that was like, for me, a big turning point to where I was like, you know what, that is like a perfect example of what virtual production can do for people and help people and companies on achieving a production where they don't have to go to the desert and get stuck in the sand or they can't access the location or just the, the harsh heat, the climate, so many different things. Um, and then the, the long drive to get to the desert, like Lancaster is an hour and a half from here, hour and 40 minutes. So that was kind of what really sparked my, my final green light to say, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Cause I just saw it firsthand, like that's just, is such a benefit to not have to deal with that. And you have bathrooms locally, it's climate controlled in the studio. You don't have to worry about that versus like getting porta potties out to where you're filming and craft services and base camp. It's all done in the studio, easy. So after, after you got your car home, yeah. uh, you, you started researching um, alternatives? Right, I mean, I already was looking into virtual production, but that was kind of like my final, my final say-so of like green lining, going ahead and doing this and starting a virtual studio because of that incident, what happened. Um, it's just like, and I mentioned some of the benefits, but that's just one of them. I mean, that can change. If you're getting a cast and crew of 20 people out, to the desert or snow mountains and people are getting stuck, it's just gonna delay productions and like cost your team more money versus you go to a virtual studio, everything's there. Like I said before, like bathrooms, your you know, craft services, your base camp, you know, where we're getting stuck, everything's easily right there within a few feet of you versus having to do all the traveling and gas for people. So it's extra ex expenses. Um, but yeah, that's what was my big turning point. How, how hot was it when you were there? Good question. That was, I should have touched base on that. Um, that was actually, so that was in 2022, I believe, or early 2022. Um, it was right during the middle of a heat wave, or the beginning of a heat wave, which just started. I didn't know when I went out there that we were in a heat wave because it was like day one or two of the heat wave. And I just thought, like, I got out there and I'm like, wow, it's really hot out here. It was like early September. I mean, I was like, it is freaking scorching hot out here. Like, I even think I took my shirt off because I was like waiting for the tow truck and it was like 115. And I had like a bottle of water and like a snack bar and that was it. And um, yeah, it was the beginning of a heat wave, a heat dome, I guess we had in LA. I think it was early 2022 or like I said, September around that time. And um, that's another thing. So it was just the heat, yeah, it was, it was bad. So and that was what also influenced me like, wow, look at that. People don't have to deal with that. I mean, how are you, how are you gonna go film out in a desert in 115 degrees? Like you can't, you have to wait. I mean, people are gonna pass out, that's liability for you. Um, you know, have medical staff on standby. So 
yeah, versus a virtual studio, you don't have to deal with that. How does virtual production factor into your plans to continue filmmaking? Yeah, I mean, I have my own personal projects that myself as a company is producing as well, to put out and, um, you know, for the public to see and for distribution uh, later down the road. I've been really focusing on, with my team managing the studio, for the most part, this past year since it's been open. Um, but as far as filmmaking currently, like with stuff I have, uh, we did, like two years ago, uh, two one-off like TV pilots, I guess you could say. One was called Suitcase City, which is now on TV TV and like Vimeo on demand. And then we also did a one-off of a uh, for X Men fans called a Cy Cyclops Chronicles: The Story of Scott Summers of the Cyclops character from X Men for X Men fans, not for distribution, just for fun, for entertainment purposes, for people to see. Um, anyways, we're taking both of those one-off pilots now, and we're taking that into the virtual studio here, and we're continuing it in virtual production entirely in virtual production, 100%. And the purpose of that is to demonstrate and show people the capabilities and the power of virtual production, what can really be done and how it, you know, how it looks on camera and how it can benefit people and help people to achieve something in a short amount of time. Um, and just in general, what virtual production, you know, what can be done with it, which is the, a whole series in general of whatever project they're trying to make. So that's what I'm working on now. And we're in post-production on those two series I mentioned. How did you teach yourself virtual production and how much of a learning curve is there? Well, wow. it was, um, you know, that was, uh, it was a long process. And I started with learning Unreal Engine myself, which is the, the game where software program for people who don't know what that is. Um, we call it a 3D asset in virtual production, what's put on the LED wall. So we use LED wall rear projection for virtual production here at the studio. And, um, yeah, I started with just like going online, going on YouTube, and then reading online. And then I started messing with it myself. Um, on my computer, I downloaded Unreal Engine, started learning that. And then when I was researching virtual production in general and reading about it, I got kind of how it worked sort of, but you know, I tell filmmakers and directors and cinematographers will come in here. It's hard to grasp what it is just by watching it on YouTube and like reading about it, you, you won't know until you go out and experience it yourself, like anything. Experience rules, everything in life, uh, whatever you're trying to do, that's the number, way, number one way you will learn. So I didn't really, until I opened the studio and really learned, I didn't really learn all the technical aspects involved in virtual production and how it really works until I opened the studio and learned by experience. And it was a lot of trial and error, a lot of just tech shooting, tons of months of that and just really learning. Um, before I made it publicly available for people to come in and rent out. So, um, so yeah, it was a big learning curve and a lot of work. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a whole, you know, couple different aspects of virtual production. And one is the camera tracking solution. So that's what we, what we use here to create what we call parallax on the wall, which is the LED wall moving in the background and unison with the uh, Unreal Engine gaming software. And did you have to get a new computer or you already had one that was compatible? I that? did. I had to get a, a, a PC with the graphic card, with, talk to a couple buddies and people in the business I knew what recommended I get a certain PC and the, gra the right graphic card to power Unreal Engine so there's no problems. Um, so yeah, I did have to get a, a, a good PC to have that. So in, in addition to the PC, the software, and then the LED wall, uh, any other things that you need that you can share? Sure. No, absolutely. So, <clears throat> so I'll kind of touch base on virtual production and like the different elements and what, what's needed and how it works. Um, so you have your LED walls, your rear projection, right? Then you have your, your computer um, with Unreal Engine on it. What's then everything's connected from the LED wall. You have a, a processor, controller, what powers the LED wall. Um, and then, like I said, the computer. And then if you have, if you're using Unreal Engine, you have that what gets displayed on LED wall. Um, and then for Unreal Engine, you have your camera tracking solution, what's basically a camera tracker, what gets mounted on top of the camera. And that camera tracker gets paired in unison with a, um, with a in-game camera. There's an actual camera in Unreal Engine called a Cine camera. And it gets paired with that through a, um, a plugin, right? So it gets paired in unison. And when it's paired through the, the plugin, it, it's, it creates what we call a parallax on the wall which is this shifting of the LED panels, which is really, it's creating this 3D effect that you're actually there instead of a static wall um, when the actor is moving left and right 
in front of the screen or forward or backwards or whatever, um, and the camera's moving with them, it's, it's the wall is moving perspective. The wall is moving perspective with the actual actor because of that camera tracker. So um, that is one of the big elements of virtual production. So you don't have that static wall. So, so yeah, and then you have you know, your lighting elements. You make sure you light it properly, um, frame it, shoot it on the, the right lens, which you want, and um, put it with the right foreground practicals. And that's how really helps facilitate this vision that you're somewhere else in the world.